Mr. Yeah. Fallon, it's such an honor to meet hey, you, man. man. No, please, nice to see you. Oh, thanks. Who changed your life more, Troll Dolls or Jay Leno? Gosh, it's so interesting. I Troll Dolls first, I'd probably <laughs> say, but tonight I have to, uh, I'll give it to Jay Leno. But uh, yeah, you clearly know my stuff. I yeah. do, I do. Uh, you gotta start somewhere, yeah. I gotta ask you, you know, that first show you did, the first show after taking over Jay Leno, how was it, how nervous were you? Like, did you, did he talk to him on the phone? Did he give you advice? How, how, how cool was he with you? Yeah, I've, I've talked to him for like six months going into the first show, and uh, he's always great with advice, and just, uh, we would talk about different things, like, what do you think about this, and should I do this long? Monologue, and I was like, you gotta make a monologue. You got monologues that gotta be longer. You gotta, you're only doing what are you doing, like six minutes, now? five minutes? I go, he goes, that, that, that. you gotta give at least, uh, you know, nine, ten minutes. And I go, really? No, that's double what I'm doing now. My writer's are already stressed out. I'm like, don't say this to me. Say it ain't so, man. Uh, but like, he would give me great advice and stuff like that, you know. And then he would, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, this is what it's all. This, this is, is you know that you're you're not getting honored, right? You know that this is a different thing. <laughs> This is Jay Leno's thing. You're get. You're not here. Well, what do I have to do? No, you don't. To get honored. No, do you, you what, get honored? What, what do you have to do? <laughs> do you have to? Apparently, I haven't done enough. <laughs> That's all I know. This is not fair. I haven't got this stupid this is, thing. This is not. This is not the Shania Twain Awards. That is oh. down the street for <laughs> denimware. Jay's getting that as well. He's getting two awards. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, for denimware. Horse-appropriate <laughs> denimware. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it right now. Yeah, but the, yeah. All this right, is, you do your interview. I'm going to do mine. Okay. Let's if you get through this all right but if you hear me doing something that I shouldn't be or something where you can help me out and please okay jump I in need a joke, I'll yeah, yeah, okay good this is fantastic yeah, one more quick question for you oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. you need a musical impression just yeah. let me know it's like uh, just just say a name <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With my hair. Back. No, I'm coming back. Yeah. Sorry. I, I had to ask you, you do so many great bits in your show. But one of my favorite things you just did recently with Brad Pitt was the breakdancing thing. How how far in advance do you reach out to Brad? How does that work? How do your bits work when you tape them like that? Brad Pitt is, is one like he's just a uh, you know a fan of the show. So we uh, and kind of a friend. So we send it to him probably six months in advance and just give him a, a list of ideas and see which ones he wants to do. And you know we've done bits before where I've yodeled with him and. Uh, this one, he thought this was funny that we're breakdancing yeah. buddies together. So uh, we started. Uh, we just, you know, got together. He likes to be silly, you know. So we got together, and he's always game. He has great sense of humor, uh, and he was telling me that his kids. I go, uh, how's the family? He goes, good. He goes, in fact, they're doing a lot of singing "Balls in Your Mouth," and I go, and if you don't know, that's a protest song that I wrote about tar balls being risen up you know, in the south from the oil spill. So don't go swimming; you'll get balls in your mouth. It's a protest song, and. Now his kids are <laughs> singing at the, at the dinner table, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> he was great, man. He's such a good guy. Well, Mr. Fallon, thank you so much. It's an absolute honor to meet you, man. Big, I think you do a phenomenal job. You're one of the best interviewers I've ever seen in my life. Oh, man, really please. Oh, man, thank, well, right back at you. This was fun. Thank you, Let's buddy. do this again. I like I'd this. I'd love to. Cool. I'd love to. I hope so. That was awesome. We're all going to be funny. So. This is one of the greatest honors of my entire life to meet you. I've been oh doing this for God, nine years. So nice. I, I didn't think I'd ever meet you, man. Thank you. Well, this is probably going to be it. I just right. want this, you to know. This is, my, this is the peak for me. Yeah. This is the peak for me. Yeah. I'm ask you, I'm gonna, back in the... Skip like do you hear, can you hear me? Yes, because... I'm sorry. Much, I, I'm Bleed through. And I'm turning into you, and I'm going, he's great. He's <laughs> Jay Leno's unbelievable. Look what he does. He deserves the award. He can't stop telling jokes. The guy's a hard-working man. He, he drives crazy cars. He drives cars that aren't cars. They're machines. Who drives these things that he drives? I, I got to skip ahead. I have to go all the way up here because I'm getting distracted. I have ADD. All right. All right. I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you. I'm skipping ahead. It's too distracting. I can't take it. Mr. I want to ask you, when you first start off in stand-up comedy, how has comedy changed from back then and now? What are, what are, what are the biggest differences comedy you see? Comedy hasn't changed. It can't change. <laughs> <laughs> How has comedy changed? Yeah. Um, I don't think comedy changes. I think there's like people like there's like a a uh, what's the word a completely honest thing about comedy. You can't pretend to think someone's funny. You can't laugh at someone because you think they're cool or they or they're you know whatever they are. There's, it's just funny has got to be funny. Right. You, laughter is involuntary and completely honest. So I, I don't think it's changed. 
I have to ask you, I own every Seinfeld episode. I have the entire box set. Oh, thank when you. When people see you on the street, what is the one you get the most? What's the one episode everyone, or one line someone says to you the most when they see you? Uh, the, the one they, they always say is, uh, where's Kramer? <laughs> Which I don't know what that means, <laughs> but that's what I hear all the time. I, I want to ask you, when he came sliding through that door, how many times did he bust his butt? How many times did he actually fall over? Oh, never. I don't think he ever fell once. Really? Sometimes he wouldn't get the exact timing or the type of slide that he wanted, and he would stop, and we would do it. And he, each one, there was a certain thing he was looking for, because right. they were. All, he had a he had a, uh, a, a a wide variety of entrances, right. and each one was chosen carefully for the scene. Right. So, um, you know, he would only make sure he had to make sure he had got the right one. Really and last question for you, I mean, Leno is obviously one of the greatest uh, talk show hosts of all time. I'm wondering, when you first saw him, do you have a particular story that he, how he changed your life in any aspect? Did he do anything particularly for you that, you just, that you're very fond of? I had never really seen anybody. Of course, you got to go, we're going back now to um, early 70s. Right. I had never seen anybody that had quite such a dismissive attitude right. on stage. And he was very cranky and... It was a certain kind of acerbic and hostile thing that was very different at that time. Uh, his first time I ever saw him on TV was on the uh, Freddie Prinz and Friends, yeah. which I think was 74 or something like that. Wow. And I remember him complaining about the club and how the owner was so cheap. And <laughs> who I just saw, by the way, walking down there, Bud <laughs> Freeman. And that was very different. Yeah. It's completely ordinary now because everyone does it. But he was a guy that I, first time I saw that attitude, that very honest, negative uh, assessment of what's going on right. in the world. You know, this is stupid, this person's an idiot, this doesn't make sense, <laughs> you know. It was very uh, uh, um, bracing at that time. Jerry, yeah. this has been one of the greatest honors of my oh, life. Thank you very I much. I think the thank Kenny you. Rogers episode when you guys were with the Kenny Rogers chicken with yeah, the red is one of the best things ever. Oh, great. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. That was amazing. That was one of the biggest honors of my life to meet him. That was so cool.